Recently, Raymond and I had the opportunity to borrow several Leica lenses and a Leica SL2S camera and bring it to San Francisco and the Northern California coast alongside our own Leica SL2. It was a fantastic trip. I will link the main project that was the purpose of the trip down in the description of this video. It was epic and we exclusively brought Leica gear. But before you go check that out, watch this review. If you're new here, hello, my name is Lee. I make and post videos every week on anything where you might have a camera in your hand, from gear reviews to technique to travel and more. I also have complete courses available to my members, so if you want to go in depth with me on photo topics, click the link in the description to learn more about channel membership. One of the borrowed lenses that made the trip with us is the Leica 90 to 280 millimeter f2.8 to f4 Vario telephoto zoom lens. It's a mainstay of the Leica L mount lineup and it picks up where the Leica 24 to 90 mid range zoom leaves off. It isn't a new lens, it isn't the first time that I've used this lens. But after using it on this trip, every day for over a week, for photos and video, for all sorts of subjects, I think it's worth a discussion today. So let's talk about this lens and what makes it unique among other L-mount telephoto options. This is the sole Leica brand full-frame telephoto zoom for the L-mount. In short, if you are a loyal Leica junkie and you desire a telephoto zoom for your full-frame Leica L-mount camera, this is literally the one. And that's not a bad thing. It's a great lens. If you were just here to see if this lens can deliver in real life use, yes, it can. It's impressive. But most of you probably want to hear more. So let's dive in. We'll start on the outside. This lens carries the same industrial design as Leica's other L-mount lenses, and it suits the SL2 and SL2S perfectly in terms of design and balance. These are heavy bodies among mirrorless cameras, and this is a heavy lens. It's built like a tank. It has the requisite zoom and focus rings, which are damped to perfection. And there is a robust tripod foot. I did use this on my tripod and it is perfectly sturdy. And actually, if the tripod foot is an important part of the process for you, this one also clicks into place every 90 degrees. So it's quicker to switch the orientation of the foot. In practice, this is actually really handy. Otherwise, like other Leica gear, this lens does not make a spectacle of itself. It's not bright white. <laughs> and from almost any distance, a casual observer would likely not know what it is, nor what it's capable of. On the inside, there are 23 elements in 17 groups, two elements used for focusing. There's optical stabilization and hydrophobic coatings on both the front and rear elements, lots of glass inside, metal on the outside, just over nine inches long, this is not necessarily for the casual shooter, although you can certainly use it casually. I wandered all over with it with no particular goal in mind, and I loved it. But bringing this lens out with you is a commitment because of the weight. Again, though, that's, that's not a negative at all. This lens just, just wants to make sure you're serious about bringing your Leica gear with you. And as you can see from the photos and the videos that we captured with this lens on our trip, we were serious about bringing this lens with us. And we were definitely happy that we did. Let me explain why. This telephoto, like no other, is designed to work perfectly with a Leica SL, SL2, or SL2S, and it absolutely works great with Leica's TL and CL APS-C offerings. The bright f2.8 to f4 aperture range is important for three primary reasons. And the third one is one that people often forget when shopping for a telephoto zoom. Number one, you can shoot this lens in low light. Our favorite time of day on the coast of Northern California was the late afternoon. It was foggy and dim, but ethereal. You guys know that I shoot different brands. The way that Leica cameras and lenses work in concert to bring you all of the fine shades in that fog is unmatched by anything else that I've used, including brands that I own and absolutely love. I can say with a straight face that if I'd not had a Leica on this trip, my blood pressure would have gone up when walking around the beach on those lovely evenings because I wouldn't have been able to capture all those shades in the fog. And don't get me wrong, shoot landscapes with any aperture that feels right to you and cameras are getting better and better at higher ISO sensitivities, but as evening sets in, having f2.8 to f4 in a zoom with this level of reach was a really good feeling. 
I knew I wasn't going to get frustrated or have difficulty capturing the scene. And when I'm confident like that, I'm a happy shooter. And then I get better results. Reason number two. Having f2.8 on the wide end of this lens and f4 on the long end means that you have tremendous flexibility with depth of field all throughout the range. I'm not saying that you need to shoot this lens wide open all the time, but you have more latitude for your creative effects as compared to a super telephoto lens that might be limited to f5.6 or maybe even a variable aperture with f6.3 on the long end. And plus, you don't hit f4 on this lens until 273 millimeters. Many variable aperture lenses jump to the narrowest, widest aperture fairly early in the zoom range. And in other words, I was surprised to see that this lens didn't limit me to f4 earlier in the zoom range. And here's the one that's easy to forget. Number three, even if you are shooting at f8 or other apertures, this lens is able to evaluate the scene and lock focus using the widest aperture available at the focal length you're shooting at. This gives the camera an easier time locking focus and getting you the shot more quickly. I've got some super telephoto lenses back there for other mounts that go to 500 millimeters or 600 millimeters, but they're at f5.6 and f6.3 at the long end. And even at the short end, 200 millimeters for each, they're f5.6 while at 280 millimeters on this is f4. Don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for those longer focal lengths, but you may notice on lenses like those, the autofocus performance can diminish compared to lenses that you have with wider apertures. In fact, the aperture range for the 90 to 280 is the same range as the Leica 24 to 90 zoom. And let's think about that for a minute. The 90 to 280 picks up where the 24 to 90 leaves off, but the 90 to 280 starts you again at f2.8. If you have the 24 to 90 or even the newer 24 to 70 f2.8, it makes for a good match set, both in design, performance, utility, and image quality. The 90 to 280 is an expensive lens. There are other L mount telephoto options, and we have reviewed two of them here on the channel, and we own one of those. Panasonic has a 70 to 200 f2.8 and a 70 to 200 f4. We own and have reviewed the f4. It's a classic zoom range on both, but both stop at 200 millimeters. Panasonic also has a variable aperture 70 to 300 f4.5 to 5.6. So it has a zoom range, but not the aperture flexibility of the Leica. The Leica has f4 available at 280 millimeters, while the Panasonic can't do f4 even at 70 millimeters. Sigma has a 100 to 400 millimeter telephoto lens that we've reviewed. It provides you the longest reach of any L mount lens. The Sigma's aperture range is f5.6 to 6.3, narrower if you add one of the two available teleconverters. So more reach for the Sigma, less flexibility with wider apertures for creative effects and low light shooting, and the camera may focus slower due to the less favorable aperture range. But reach is reach, and for L-mount shooters, that Sigma certainly is worth a look. I certainly enjoyed my time with it. What these telephoto choices for L-mount come down to is your needs. For one, Leica buyers tend to be very loyal to the brand, and that may make the decision right there for many Leica shooters. And if you do expect to be shooting in lower light and you do want to enjoy the 90 to 280 focal length range, then the Leica lens is spot on for you. And this is true if you shoot a Sigma or Panasonic L-mount camera too. The other fast aperture L-mount telephoto options top out at 200 millimeters. The options from Panasonic and Sigma that deliver 300 and 400 millimeters respectively do not have the aperture flexibility that you can enjoy with this Leica lens. And this last specification may go without saying, but the Leica telephoto is the most expensive option of the lenses that I've discussed. If you are a Leica shooter or follow the brand, I probably won't surprise you. Leica competes on product and image quality design, uniqueness, and durability. And I can confirm firsthand that they do each of those in a way that puts them in a class by themselves. And as for uniqueness, you won't find another 90 to 280, f2.8 to f4, variable aperture telephoto zoom from any other brand. Similar for sure, but not that specific range. Nor will you elsewhere find the sum of the parts that Leica puts together for each of their products. So a few things to bring this video home. This lens has to go back to Leica. But she will be missed. 
Raymond and I would love to have this for our collection. And I'd love to hear what you think about this lens. And if you chose this or one of the other telephoto options for your L-mount body, let us know why you chose what you chose. What do you use the lens for? Like, are you using it for random anything, kind of like I did? Or do you use it primarily for something? Wildlife, for example. And speaking of wildlife, even if you aren't an L-mount user, I have a question for everyone. I mentioned in the beginning of this video that I have complete courses available to my members on different photography topics where I go in depth, start to finish. I'm considering the next few courses that I'll be creating. Would you be interested in a dedicated course on wildlife photography? Let me know. And while you are on your way down to those comments, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Those two very simple things are a big help for the channel. I also have links to this lens and some of my other L-mount reviews in the description of this video in case you're interested. Thank you to Leica for allowing me to borrow this lens and thank you for watching.